Okay, we move on to The Office Season 6, and, um... I'm gonna take back a couple things that I said about Season 5, because you know um, how I was remarking that that season, while still being good, ultimately turned out to be a weaker season of the show, and I called it the worst season since Season 1? Uh... <laughs> This is the worst season since season one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like with a couple of my Big Brother reviews, I kind of, um, think I was hard on it because that season was worse than season five. Because even though season five did have, you know, its episodic bits, I can still remember it. I felt like I understood where everyone was. I felt like the uh, writers were doing a nice job with it. But this season, even though it didn't necessarily have too much of an episodic jump, the problem was, um, I don't really feel like too much happened. Now, stuff did happen, okay? The company was bought out. Out. One of another Scranton branch was brought out by this new Sabre company. We got that addition of, um, Gabe and Joe into the company. Dwight and uh, Angela go on to a new, um, phase of, um, repairing their relationship, even though it's not so much a repairing, it's them coming to a mutual agreement to try and, uh, work together in that area. Pam and Jim have a kid, Michael continue, who's, um, going on with his uh, love life and failing epically, and Ryan turns, uh, more of a goofball than he has in the past, and then we had, um, Andy and Daryl kind of rise up in the company, and Andy gets a story arc that's a lot more independent for the other characters, which is nice. So, that list I gave you is a fairly nice list, but... Part, uh, but the problem is, is like, well, Gabe, I feel like his character, he's even more, um... Wooden than Toby is, this thing's sliding down, because, like, Toby at least has the rivalry with Michael and the crush on Pam to tie him into the cast. Gabe, he has nothing other than a slight tie to Joe, and that's really it. So, his character doesn't add much, even though you can argue it is needed to show a little bit of transition into the company, and then you have another sort of HR person, but he just doesn't really add anything, and um... Even though we did have episodes that took place outside of the office, I feel like we were way too cooped up in the same location this time, and it didn't really do that much for me. Now, I know that season two was fairly cooped up in there, even though there were a couple of times that it left the office building, but... Well, the show was newer at the time, and it was acing everything here, not so much. I didn't feel as, like, close to the cast this time, and it was a little bit of a chore for me to, um, get through this season, and I don't remember too much from the season other than what I've been describing, and it's not, but, 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 let me say that I didn't hate this season, it's just, it's an example of a show being on a high platform and then beginning to slide down into something that's not nearly as good. It's kind of the same reaction I had with Lost Girl, where it's first three seasons, very high platform, doing pretty well, even though the third season did accumulate a good amount of flaws. But then season four drops the quality of the show just epically. Now, the quality of the show did not go down too much in here, I'll admit, and I was being entertained, I didn't laugh, although not nearly as much as I did in previous seasons, and just, yeah, if I'm going to nominate a season that's filler, it's this, and um, I'm really hoping that I'm not gonna end up, like, you know, biting my words, and that every season of the show onward is going to be, um me thinking that, um, it's got its flaws, but then the next season has uh, so many more flaws that it makes the season that came before that season look good in comparison, because that's what I felt with the new Battlestar Galactica series when I first saw it, so I hope that this doesn't turn into that, but I did have a little bit of a warning, I'll admit, because even though this is the first season that I'm seeing for the first time. I did have a warning that most people consider this to be a weak season of the show. And the general trend seems to be that people, um, 
kind of like the seventh season, although I do have a one major story arc for that season spoiled, so... Yeah, but it's the obvious one. I mean, like for crying out loud, Steve Carroll made pretty big news when he announced that he was going to do what he did, so... Yeah. Well, that summarizes my thoughts on that season, I think. See you for the next vid.